Welcome everybody. I'm glad that you're joining me. We have some work to do. I have my Leptotis bicolor that I'm going to put back on a mount. Finally, I have a solution, I think, for my Trichocentrum tigrinum. And good old Dendrobium exili is going back in a pendant growing position on a Michael mount. Three different variations, three different orchids, but I think we have the solution now, so I want to test it out. So far we have seen how roots behave on the more denser material of the Michael mount, which are just normal kitchen scouring pads, not treated, there's no chemicals in them, they're just the normal stuff. We also have mounted a couple of orchids on the ninja mounts, but only a single layer. So in this case, I have added a double layer front and back. Some of you are going to like this, watch. Woohoo! How's that for a fly spotter, huh? That would work. What do you think, Megan? That makes it nice and warm for the winter as well. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> um, this is for my trichocentrum. Because another thing I've noticed is that, is that certain uh, root sizes will behave differently with certain materials. And I have come up with my little Norg, that is Ninja Orchid's root grade scale. And I believe that the root sizes 1 to 4, the very thin ones, will do well on the Michael mounts. And 5 to 10 might fare a bit better on the Ninja mounts because the material is more giving and a little bit more poofy. Ninja Orchid's technical term right there. Okay, let's get to it. I have several things going on here on the table. One is my bleach water. I keep wiping my hands as I work between orchids. One is my alcohol. And we're going to start with a trichocentrum first. My regular RO water. In case the roots get dry while I work with all of them. Just to keep misting and spraying. So I want to start with the trichocentrum. Let's get you out. I've been waiting for a long time. The little I understand about trichocentrum is that they are very thirsty. So this is how it has been since the day I bought it. Sat in its net, sat in the media, just sitting there. Just want to give you a closer look so that you can see why I'm making the decision to change it over now. I've always wanted to mount this, but I never figured out what was the best way. So I'm getting some branching on the roots here. So I'll be very careful what I snip off and clean off. And I had a tiny little growth starting when I first got it, which was this one but you can see it was stressed and didn't appreciate the transition to my climate. So anyway, this, um, it actually looks like a psychopsis to me, but no pseudobulbs. We will clean this up and I'm going to put this on the little mitten, <laughs> for lack of a better term, mount of a ninja mount, and then see how it does. As it is very thirsty, that is the plan why I did a double layer. I thought this would be a great candidate for that. It looks really, really manky, but you have to deal with what you get in the mail. There might be a sound difference. I was trying a um, wireless microphone and I wasn't quite sure about the quality of it. So for now, even though I've been doing some tests this morning, I'm not comfortable with what I'm hearing just yet. So bear with me on the two different types of sound. I would like to know how one sounds over the other, bearing in mind that as I'm sitting here far away from the camera, I'm actually talking much louder so the neighbors can hear me and listen in, which is not a problem. I'm not sharing any secrets here. 
But it would be a nicer experience for me not to feel like I'm always shouting above what I would normally speak as because it comes across, maybe it comes across as a little bit overbearing, but that is just because I am talking much louder under these circumstances than I normally would. The wireless mic, as much as I like the concept, I do want to make sure that I can actually tweak it to where it sounds normal and it didn't. So we'll see how this goes. I will put the intro in with the wireless mic into the editing and then see how that sounds once it's on the computer. Something I didn't do in my tests. I didn't think I needed to do that because I know what my voice sounds like when I'm actually just working with the mic as it is now with a dead cat on it. Not my words, not my terminology. I'm just repeating what others call it. I'm not going to take off any more. Well, maybe this one. Because I need to see how I can anchor this onto the mount. I have one, two nice new roots growing, but they're up in the air. That's kind of a pointless exercise. The worst part of the orchid is back here. The new growth was coming out from the middle, but it has certainly plumped up since I got it. It was really, really sad. And this one came from Gross Rechner Orchideen. Quite surprised because normally their orchids are quite pristine, but maybe that's why it was on sale. <laughs> so the idea, as I don't know what is the next line of growth is just to mount it not up against the mount or maybe like this yeah that would work any new growth that decides to come out can come out from the back or the front so yes i'm a little bit upset with regards to my attempts at improving audio i thought i could just get on with it and get this done with my new mic but in order for me to do that i need to do a little bit more testing honestly and it is so hot that i'm not going to wait until tomorrow to do this now that i've figured a system out that could work i want to get it done I wonder if anybody else has these moments where you just lollygag for months and months, indecisive, and your indecisiveness doesn't phase you at all. And then suddenly you get this urge and it becomes a matter of immediate urgency and nothing else will do. That's, that's me with the Trek Centro. I've been umming and eyeing about how to grow this. I know I didn't want to put it into my Lekka. It looks like the orchid itself is just not, from its growth habit, conducive to that form of growing. And then I saw this whole thing with the micro mounts evolving. And all I've been wanting to do since is get it done. Now I have a root right here that I've managed to quetch under my elastic. Let me see. Is it the last loop I did? Because if it is, I can undo it. It is. Look at that. <laughs> Perfect. Up and over. There's a cross stitch up and over, I think. And now you are firm. I'm going to see how long my elastic material, elastic band here will last on a mount. If it starts to snap, deteriorate or something else. It should be interesting because actually I quite like it with just three loops around I got it secured look at that and I have one branching root tip not too shabby 
I just wonder how long this elastic will last, but we'll find out. So with this one branching root tip is right here by the material. These others feel a little bit soft, but I'm just going to leave them anyway. And then I have the two aerial ones that I have been spraying regularly a lot. Now I could possibly encourage this one down. We'll see how that goes. For now I'm just going to leave it and maybe it will direct itself down all on its own. Now this one has lived up to now in the bottom shelf of my dining room where it's got lots of airflow, a little bit more protected from the outside elements. But uh, I think I'm going to leave it in that area for now because the temperatures have risen considerably. The, the wind is very, very hot and we will keep it monitored. There we go. Okay, what else have we got here? Everything else is inorganic. Next up, Dendrobium Exile. 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 I'm very happy to be able to put this back on a mount. Look at how much it has grown. Remember when I... I'll put up a card when I put this off and tipped it upside down because of its growth habit. Yeah, well, look at that growth where I thought it was going upright. No, this is, I'm taking it back down to pendant. I much, much prefer it. Look at the roots, how they're growing. And I have one that has gone down into the lava rock. I can tweak that and work it out, but it is going back to pendant. It's looking good for that. It has now come onto its own and has probably in my perception adapt it to my environment. So I think that was the issue. It took a long time to acclimatize. So very gently, I'm going to try and save that long root. We have a lot of root growth. Very, very pleased. Now I'm working back to front. Let me see. Okay. Okay. I didn't manage to save it. Quel dommage, quel dommage. So this mount will now just go as is onto this mount. And yes, there is a little structure in the back. <laughs> but that's just to hold it up. And I think the orchid will be quite happy just to go straight on down here no two ways about it and get its roots that it has grown into something that will appreciate a little bit more humidity and you know what I've always noticed with my mounts how high I place my orchids <laughs> Uh, I don't know why that happens. It's just one of those things. So I'm going to keep this one lower and make sure that I will then be able to observe 
how the two centimeter wet layer in the Michael mounts affects the root. Clearly there's a lot more buildup of any kind of fertilizer or salts right at the bottom there. So it'd be interesting to see how bad because we're going to have some roots growing down into that area. I'm trying not to stab my finger in the back here. Just going to help get the tray to help me with that growth. I don't want to flatten it or snap it. There we go. Numero deux. This new growth was my point of contention. I thought it was going to grow upright. That's why I put it into a pot in the first place. Because I did originally get it in a pot growing upright and I thought this is a great pendant orchid, so I put it on a mount. And then everything started to go up, including the new growth. But now, I can see it's going down. And the longer one is going, it doesn't know where to go because it's totally confused by having been moved. But I think this is the much better option, and I'm really pleased to have it in place. And you can see this little root here. That's the one that we're going to watch and see how it does. That one can, has all the hallmarks of going into the bottom two centimeters. And we'll see how it fares, what the buildup is. This to me, in the Norgs category, Ninja Orchid Root Grade Scale is a 1. Michael Mount, 1 to 4. And last but not least, let's do Leptotis. My Leptotis bicolor. I'm very glad to still have it with me. It was such a sad little orchid when I got it and the fact that it's here and the fact that it bloomed for me this year, I was amazed. Very grateful. Very amazed. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. It was a first blooming in my case, so I only experienced the fragrance like about the fifth day. It was very, very slight, but I'm hoping the next time it blooms, if I can get it to bloom again, then I get a much more intense fragrance. It should be vanilla. Semblances of vanilla. So this year I only see one growth. That's all I need for a transition is one growth. I would have liked to have seen two, but Poor little thing that maybe got ahead of itself by blooming. Wow, okay. I did not expect this. Not one bit. So I'm not mounting this. We are going to pot this one up. Last minute decision. I am not mounting this. The roots love the moist environment. I can't keep up at the moment with this kind of watering needs. Now these are the old ones, so not worried. But everything else that has grown in the meantime, oh yes, I'm going to encourage that. We're potting this up. We're potting this up. Well, 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 how about that for a plot twist? But I'm glad. I'm really glad. I was not expecting such a good root system. Everything could be a bit better, of course. But, uh, no, no, gotta change, gotta change the plan. Even though I want it mounted, um, those roots, this time of year, no way. It's not going to work. So I'm not going to stick to the script. 
this is going ad lib right now. Everybody in the theater is probably going, oh, shock horror. What is she doing? <laughs> but I'm going to make one adjustment to help the roots along a little bit more because it is going in a bigger pot. So I'm not going to disturb it again next year is to put ceramics around the middle because yes it was doing well but there's no need to push it so then I don't have to separate the lecker or anything there we go this is the last of my ceramics that has been prepared I have two more bags that are not prepared and I might as well use this up and I know this is the perfect candidate. How about that then? Okay. There was a car outside just on idle for the last 20 minutes. I was about to have a little bit of a fit, but it gave me room to think even I got a little bit like wow okay I had something in mind I had to rethink and I forgot my doohickey it was soaking in the bleach my doohickey would not have gone into the pot so in a way I'm very grateful that the car gave me 20 minutes to look at what I'm doing but yeah anybody else when you're repotting or doing something you have something in mind and then suddenly, curveball, nice curveball. Let's make sure we get this one in properly again. The reason I'm filling around with ceramics now is simply because of the way the roots have been behaving in the past. I have noticed that this one has a tendency to stay, it's like a little climber. That's why I wanted to mount it again. So some of the roots come out on the top and can't really find their way through my lecker because I have a dry surface. But when it is in active growth like this, the new growths are so petite that I'm very wary about spraying the top layer. So that is why Ceramis. Try not to make a mess, Nina. Now it does look to be a fiddle with wet Ceramis. And yes, it is. It sticks to everything, but dry ceramics on roots like these is even worse. So I'll just deal with it. Maybe I didn't need the support after all, but I think it's better just to have one just in case. And I really do now want to finish this little bit, but I'm not going to. I'll just keep this little bit of ceramics here for topping it up as and when needed in the future. Well, 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 who'd have thought? I honestly, me, let's get them all mounted. And then boom, nice. Here we have some fertilized water. There we go. Leptotis by color. Perfect. Quelle surprise, happy with that. Wow, okay. That's one way to get a reaction. And here they all are. Wow. Oh, well, look at this. How's this for variety? <laughs> we got a ninja mount with a double padding experiment going on. Fantastic. We've got a Michael mount with Dendrobium exili back in a pendant growing habit, hopefully. But now I think with an opportunity and a chance to actually be successfully grown this way. Already I've just soaked it while I was working with the others, so that's fine for the rest of the day. And Leptotus bicolor throwing us a curveball where I was completely getting ready to mount it. And hello, we need to repot it. At least, my opinion, that's the way it should be with roots like that. In the middle of August, there's no way they're going on a mount as an experiment. Maybe springtime next year, but again, we have to weigh up. Are the roots growing? Is it an active growth? Is it about to bloom? So it's not always good timing at any given time of year. 
It was growing new roots and I thought on the mount it goes, but I would lose all the internal roots if I went the radical route and just mounted it. And I'm not going to do that at this point. We are having quite a variety of other mounts to observe and watch. Happy days. <laughs> this is how orchids are. Thank you everybody so very much for watching. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a fabulous day. I will see you hopefully in the next video. Thank you so much. Take care. Be safe. Bye.